You're right, so I know what you're thinking, and yeah, you got damn right. This is what we're doing now. YouTuber shit, weekend live vlogs, all of that. Get ready, because you might get a like, subscribe, and peace soon as well. So that's all I'm saying. Anyway, why did I pick this week? I don't really know, to be honest. It was just a random week that I picked, and it ended up being quite an unusual one. In terms of work I'm doing, in terms of code, wasn't doing all that much, but these Bayesian neural networks, we've been trying to get working on our Parkinson's data. Model's almost there, but we're just tweaking hyperparameters. So when I'm referring to hyperparameter sweeps, that's what I'm talking about. Then in terms of when I was going into uni, I was TA in a course, so a lot of time was taken up by that. Then any other remaining time I had, I was reading papers. It was also quite a social week for me in that I had a friend's girlfriend who was in a place, so we went out to go watch that. One of the PhD people from my lab graduated, so we went out to go celebrate that. And then one of my friends from back home finished his law exam, so also went out for a celebration there. But rest assured, I'm actually pretty boring in real life. I'm just doing it for the content engine. Actually, I'm not. I just realised I didn't record any of that. <laughs> so I guess just enjoy the rest of the content. Enjoy me learning about stuff. How fun, how engaging is that? It's about 12 o'clock now. Got up at 8.30, so I got about two and a half hours of work in. Been running the hyperparameter sweeps for different number of samples, different number of features, and taking a bit longer than I thought it would, but I think I'll still be able to get it done by the end of today before I need to stop working. And yeah, it's going alright. It's going alright. Alright, so we're cooking some food. Bang. We've got the chapati on. My parents have made some food already. What we got here? Some dal from yesterday. Some beans. Some rice. What's this? Sambar, so yeah, dosa yesterday. So I'm gonna have my lunch. I'm a little bit behind because I got up late, so I'm just gonna work through lunch, I think. There's an easy task for me to do because I'm looking for some data and seeing if we can access it, basically, so it's nothing too strenuous. And just keep the, the hyperparameter sweeps running in the background. Yeah, all right, so Savage here, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Got back a little late last night from that play, but it was amazing. If you haven't seen Back to the Future at the Adelphi Theatre, go watch that, it's incredible. And, um, I didn't drink too much, so I'm good this morning. I had a little bit of a lie in there anyway. Got up at 8.30 and then I read this paper, Fibro Metabolism, which is talking about how fibrotic diseases are really interlinked with your metabolism going haywire. Super, super interesting. Actually, the second time that I read this, and I want to make a video on this at some point, but there's just so much information here. Like, these papers... I, I find these papers the hardest papers to read because they're so dense like there's so much individual research of like wet lab biologists doing like they'll look at one metabolite and then they'll like study that to the death and then publish a paper on it and then loads of individual wet lab scientists do that same thing and then someone comes together and they start like bridging those gaps and then eventually you get this whole mechanism that comes from it so there's so much information there like machine learning papers are super hard on the methods level but i think once you kind of break that hurdle with a couple papers you can get through them i've never really found it gets easier with these bio papers like it just takes a lot of reads and um it's all right though because it is made easier by the fact that they have they have a lot of diagrams as you can maybe see there i've got to do some more hyperparameter sweeps and report some of the features selected for our model for um a meeting i have later today with my supervisors Anything else to say? I don't think there's anything else to say, so ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right, okay, let's go. So I got my rice there, jira rice. Got some chana, chana masala. And then carrying on with these hyperparameter sweeps. I had the meeting with my supervisors and we discussed the next steps for the plan. We're currently in the harder stage. The bottleneck is getting the model working. Once that's done, it's definitely a paper on the end of it. Maybe even a second clinical one, but we'll see about that. So yeah, working through that, just thinking about the best ways to approach the experimental side of it, the hyperparameter sweeps, etc. I spent a couple hours looking at the AI for drug discovery market um, and just learning more about that. There's like an interesting Derek Lowe article I read. He's got a great blog on this called In the Pipeline where he just talks about drug discovery and pharma and um, had a little review of some, some companies that have used AI to create drugs, or at least have said they have. Um, his article basically is arguing that they haven't really discovered any drugs for the, for the majority of the part. It's more like they say they are. And um, there's some issues there with how AI has been used as kind of a hyper marketing tool. And it's important for me as well. I, re I read an even better article. It was surveying the whole landscape of uh, companies that are using AI to create drugs and how far they've progressed through um, clinical trials most of them are still preclinical but in silico in particular have managed which is a, a company out of the US and quite a recently created company I think they're only six years old yeah 2018 it's when they were created and um, they managed to get 17 
candidates to at least preclinical. They even have an IPF drug in phase two, which is the disease that I study for my PhD. But that is an anomaly. I think like out of the, seemed like there were over a hundred drugs there or something, a lot of drugs, only one, or only maybe like two or three have made it to like phase two or beyond. Made I think there was one in phase three, but yeah. I, I think it's bedtime for me. It's like 12.15. Bloody hell, mate. About 9.30. Just spent this morning doing a bit more of the hyperparameter sweeps for my neural networks. So I'm going into Imperial today, which is in White City. I've got a master's student meeting. I've got a meeting with my supervisor. And then there's a talk on ARPA-H, which is kind of like a DARPA, you know, like innovative, long-term scientific progress kind of investment fund, but specifically for healthcare. And yeah, there are also a couple papers that I need to read. Um, paper on looking at how you kind of change SNP effect sizes when you're dealing with multi-ancestry populations and the original paper was for genomics I want to see if it can be used to be applied to microbiome studies because I'm working with a microbiome data set um, so I'm going to read that and then I've got another paper that I wanted to make a video on called AI and the whole wide world benchmark which is on AI ethics um, or it's rather it's by the AI ethics crowd. The issue with benchmarks is that they only they have to be either super targeted and well laid out, or like they end up kind of being a bit amorphous and not really useful for anything in particular. All right, hey, so it's like quarter past eight now. Back home, went in today with my master student. I co-supervise him with my supervisor, and it's quite a nice dynamic to have because we can basically always be giving ideas out. Like when one of us is talking, the other one isn't. Kind of like, and we kind of bounce off for ideas with each other. Um, quite nicely. It's a good dynamic, I feel. Went to this talk on ARPA-H, which was being done at Imperial. So their ARPA-H is kind of a riff on DARPA, which is that well-known military science innovative agency thing that was run by America before. I think they created the internet. They may have done some other stuff with space tech. I don't really know. But like super, super famous. Now they've got ARPA-H, which is the healthcare version of that. And so I think the United States government basically just gives them a load of money and it's like, pick out the right people to invest this in. We had the Vice Provost of Imperial, I think, who was just chatting to her and they were just, you know, audience questions, that kind of thing. To be honest, it was a little bit short. I wish it would have been longer because I feel like the, the questions were starting to get pretty interesting. I went after her and I, she was there for a little bit longer. So I asked her a question on kind of how the programs work. So they have 17 key programs and they have one key program manager who has to come from the US, but they take projects and staff and postdocs and they hire from basically wherever in the world. And I'm trying to think about like, if I finish the PhD, what exactly I'd go into. And I want to do something that really pushes me and is ambitious and really just does change the world. I don't know if that's like doing a startup and then progressing outwards from there, or if it's to go join one of these scientific organizations. I think the one thing about ARPA H, which is good is that my impression of it is that they're like going all the way from discovery into application. Whereas like if I were to do a startup, I'd really have to have a lot of the discovery side sorted out and we'd have to be transitioning into the product side. And yeah, so that was good. And then I came back home straight after, was reading that paper that I started the day off with on, on my way in or in the morning rather on the phylogenetic tree regularization. And yeah, that one's looking pretty interesting. Interesting as well because it's done, one of the co-authors is um, Shadi, who I met when I was working at Microsoft and he's, uh, we got along really well. I want to like drop him a message maybe about this paper because he's also doing stuff that is relevant to one of my other projects, which is looking at simulated data. He's got a simulated data package. want to just kind of see if there was some ideas that I can bounce off of him because he's basically developed simulated data package for genomics data. I've got slightly more complex data in terms of the interactions with proteomics. So basically that's because when you have genes, they're usually separate and the interaction effects are usually a lot sparser, but with proteins, like you've got proteins flowing all around the body and interacting with each other. So there's a lot more kind of feedback loops that you can get there. So I wanted to ask him if there's any way of me trying to encode that in. And also if I could try and simulate data for the microbiome, which is one of the projects I'm working on for my PhD. Yo, so it's around 8.30 at the moment. I'm chilling and acting in a park. I had to get up a bit earlier today, like 6.30, because I'm teaching today. So I was revising some PCA and some MDS on the way in. It's, it's kind of funny, actually. When I was younger, I always used to think that teachers or supervisors, professors, whatever, like, they always just knew what they had learned before. Like, everyone, or you always, once you've learned PCA, you always know PCA. Once you've learned 
a neural network, you always know how neural networks work, but it's like every year you have to relearn it, basically. Obviously it's easier to relearn than it was the first time around, but you always have to relearn it because you, you, you just forget because of how busy you become. The workload for professors just increases exponentially when you have teaching involved. Especially when you're like doing new courses because like doing the lectures and doing all of that stuff takes so much time to do. It made me respect it a lot more to be honest, the amount of effort that they put into it. It's so much like other shit professors have to deal with that you don't, you're kind of shielded from as a student. When you do like your research project at the end of your final year and you're just working on the research, like that's a luxury to just be able to work on research. A lot of professors are either writing grants or they're teaching, preparing teaching materials, they're supervising other students. Very little time to actually do your own research, which is something that really I didn't understand until I did a PhD. I think that's true of any kind of discipline that like, you know, the higher up you go, it becomes more of a sort of managerial role than it is necessarily doing the pure science. But it doesn't seem like the best balance. Like, I don't know why so much time gets shifted away from doing research. You're all right, so it's about 5 p.m. now. Finished teaching today. Got like three, three and a half hours of uh, basically debugging students' code, Python code, sorting out Conda issues, that kind of thing. And then also doing some PCA and MDS stuff. It's also interesting to see how many people are using ChatGPT and the generative AI stuff and how helpful it is for a lot of this stuff. like coding, plotting, understanding. I'm really excited to see where it's gonna go with the teaching side. And I think that there's a lot of scope for biology education to get better, particularly for, the one thing I always think about is like, well, it was the, the paper that I was reading the other day on, on fiber and metabolism. When you have these huge network biology papers or mechanisms, there's gotta be an easier way to learn them and like get that information in. I feel like question answering, which is what LLMs are really good at, once we figure out how to use them in the right way with graph structured data will be like super super helpful for understanding how networks work and how to learn networks better that's my hunch that's that's one of the things that i hope will happen because it would honestly like if you can make big improvements there i think it would drastically improve medicine and pharma also got a little bit of coding work done today um looking at data for the uh, Parkinson's data that I'm looking at and basically we have more patients than we had previously for proteomics they did like a new run um, of patients but I'm having some issues kind of matching it up with the clinical data for the outcomes so I need to sort that out data wrangling man it never goes away data wrangling that, that's what my day's been fucking data wrangling and sort of that conda issues and debugging python code and sk learn code this is the essence of what coding is. This is really like over 60%, I'd say, of, of all coding is like just sorting out all of this stuff. I think the worst thing is I kind of enjoy it now. Yeah, all right, so it's Friday morning. I'm getting ready to go in. Did a little bit of work this morning looking at some data stuff and then again, ran a few more hyperparameter suites, which has been like the constant theme throughout this. Gotta go teach, so I'm gonna go get the train very soon and then read a few papers on the way in, revise for that teaching session, do that teaching session, then maybe I'll edit some videos and then I've got a nice evening planned. Gonna go see some friends, friends got a photography exhibition and then one of my boys from home has just finished his law exam so we're gonna go celebrate, which is gonna be fun. I don't know how people like always have stuff to talk about on these videos, like I was watching other YouTubers who do Week in the Life, they just like regularly do a Week in the Life. I just kind of run out of shit to say, I don't really fucking know how people do this. It is a bit like Truman Showy as well, like I always feel the, the urge to like have a camera on me and record myself. And that's only for doing it for like a week. I think what I'm going to do is I might do this like once in a while, pick a random week, try and film whenever I've got enough time. And I want to give it like, make it fairly realistic, give you some insight into the research side of things. But yeah, maybe I am just boring, man. Maybe I don't really do that much. Oh, well, simple life. I like it. Anyway, bye.